Hello everybody, uh, thank you for being here again. Uh, today we have a wonderful guest, he is from Canada and I know that he is a musician that plays different kind of instruments that some are from India and he also have a really deep spiritual bar background. But uh, so maybe Jonathan can speak a little bit about himself to introduce what he do. Uh, and so let's begin with this. Sure. Yes. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and to share a little bit about my, uh, I guess, my musical life. Um, I'm a jazz musician. I grew up as a jazz musician around um, a lot of really great jazz musicians in Toronto. My uncle was actually one of them. He was a trombone player and played in uh, some of the best big bands. And um, he taught at the, the college that I went to. And he played a lot of uh, pit orchestra work, uh, musical work, uh, studio recording work. And um, I really grew up looking up to, to him as a musician, um, as a person as well. And um, so I, uh, I, that's really my roots. And I, I still play jazz. I love jazz. I'm a saxophonist. And so I, I specialize I play tenor and soprano saxophone. Um, and I, I got to a point in my life where I was kind of becoming a professional in a way. I, I left, I, I graduated school and went into the real world, you know, the real world, quotation marks. <laughs> what, I, what I thought was the real world, which was really a matter of like, how do I pay my bills and play music? and do what I love, you know? And so I did that for quite some time and I really, um, I did enjoy it a lot. It's a fast paced lifestyle. It's not a lot of downtime, uh, a lot of traveling and, and performing, rehearsing, uh, great, great communities of people. Um, I played lots of different music. I played uh, a lot of jazz, like I said, but lots of I played Latin music. I played soul and funk music and rock and roll, classic rock, um, all on the saxophone. And uh, I got to a place in my life where, um, I was sort of, I was feeling like I wasn't able to practice. There wasn't enough time. And I really wanted to cultivate myself as a, something more than a professional who could fit into a specific role in society or in, in industry or in a, even in a band. I mean, if you join a, a certain kind of band that does music from a certain kind of era, you're really playing a certain role. And my training kind of really um, prepared me for that really, really well. Um, but I was looking th at this point, I felt like I was really looking more into the, into who I was, um, and what I wanted to do. What did I want to add to the history of music in a way, you know, like how, how did I fit in and who was I? And so some of these kinds of existential questions, um, they, they got me looking to, um, Eastern spirituality, most, most, more specifically Indian spirituality. I felt there I was, was some kind of an, uh, there's a history in jazz to um, jazz musicians um, uh, in the, especially in the '60s, when there was a big countercultural kind of um, rupture all over the world, but especially in music in the United States. And there was a lot of African American jazz musicians who were really explicitly looking to um, the power of spirituality um, to fight the, in their revolution, in their cultural revolution, and fight for social rights and and the free jazz movement is really, uh, that's what that is. Um, and the musicians that were involved in that were very explicitly, um, not all of them, but some of them were very explicitly political. But so, some of them were more, um, not so political, um, but like not consciously political, not engaging in that, but they were more spiritual. And so somebody like John Coltrane okay. is a really big influence on me. And Albert Eiler and um, Don Cherry and Cecil Taylor. There's a lot of musicians that were looking to kind of overtake the conventions of the time. Um, and I was really inspired by that. And I felt that that was, a, is, it was an integral part of what I was understanding as jazz. So, so the, the tradition of jazz is not, you know, like all traditions, you cannot be essentialized. It cannot be limited to one type of view or one kind of definition i really felt that it was um it, it gave me what i'm calling in my work and i'm developing with um debashish Banerjee, my mentor and chair at california institute of integral studies i'm doing a phd under him oh, nice. and 
Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm uh, so I found that jazz gave me this what we're calling an integral impulse. It's almost like the question of jazz to me it was posing a question, and it it really had to do with how I could kind of um, how I could fold in different influences from different parts of the world, like find find things that resonated with me that made sense to me that were beautiful to me that were moving and bring them into who I was. And so uh, John Coltrane, like I mentioned, was a very big example of that because he looked to Indian spirituality in the, the mid sixties. He wrote a, a composition and released an album that was very revolutionary or really monumental um, um, in jazz history, in music history, Western music history called a love Supreme. And it was really his, uh, it was really explicitly, um, he had liner notes that he wrote, and it was really a poem to the divine. Um, and he really didn't, uh, he didn't say that this was a, a specific religious idea of God. He, he talked about God, but it was really more of a, something more universal or cosmic. And so inspired by, um, you know, what I'm calling the integral impulse in, in jazz, I was um, very attracted to Indian culture, and I, I did see how... Uh, Coltrane was looking to the east among others and so I traveled to India <laughs> with my brother and best friend at the t um, you know back when they were in college I had graduated but the three of us traveled to India to learn about Indian music and our first trip was five uh, weeks and we learned from the man that became our our guru Shantanu Bhattacharya he was a, a vocalist an Indian classical vocalist and I uh, learned the how to apply and how to play North Indian raga music on the saxophone. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was a very long process. Uh, my goal wasn't initially to learn traditionally to play a raga. That seems like something that was, wasn't, um, it wasn't a goal of mine. I was, I, my goal was to be influenced by their music to maybe um, find sound, new sounds or new rhythms, new ways of approaching basically a structure of jazz, a structure of music that could be used in jazz somehow. And I released an album with my brother and Justin called Monsoon. The band's name was Monsoon and the album was called Mandala. Yeah, and, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and so that's like really, uh, it was a 10 year process really of playing with that band, writing music and working with that band before recording. And that was really, the music is really the 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 result, the, the sonic result of this whole you know, cross-cultural, uh, these travels and studies and, and, and kind of immersing ourselves in another culture, another cultural music. And so that, that was um, one result, uh, in a sense, um, an ongoing uh, kind of process, which is really addressing, um, addressing my engagement, my involvement, my becoming with and becoming an insider of the North Indian Raga tradition, as well as um, finding my finding my, my way as a, a kind of an improvising and creative jazz musician. And the other thing that happened was um, I did take on the goal at one point. I was so, so deeply uh, uh, affected and in love with this North Indian raga music that I, I ended up returning to India and lived there for 10 years. And I, I focused on learning raga music so that I could perform it traditionally. And that would be the other side of what I have cultivated in my life. Um, and that was a, a very long process, a long circuit, if you will. It's ongoing. We know always students of, of music growing, but um, it was a very beautiful time in my life. And I was able to um, really focus on music. Uh, I received the, the generous support of, of some grant foundations and, and councils here in Canada. And Canada has a very good um, support for artists and musicians and um and so that helped me stay in and immerse myself. Um, I also perf like performed professionally when I lived in India those, those that decade and got, traveled a lot and played with some amazing world class musicians and grew and learned and learned and and uh, I uh, I ended up also at a certain point deciding to play a stringed instrument called the estraj and that instrument is a uh, is a is from the West Bengal so the area of Cal the state of Calcutta and okay. it's a twenty one stringed instrument and. I went to live in a small uh, university town that was founded by Rabindranath Tagore um, called Shantiniketan. And I, I learned with my guru there, Abir Singh Kangura, who taught me the Esraj. And 
And so I've, I'm also um, involved in that, playing that instrument um, classically and as well as experimentally. And um, I guess I could just finish giving an overview of, of some of my, my, my past history and sort of what I'm doing. I, released, uh, I just released a solo album with it, which was made in COVID um, um, that involves uh, experiments between these two kind of worlds, you know, being an Indian classical musician and, and, and sort of immersing myself in that the whole culture as well as being a Western person from Toronto, Canada, um, and being a jazz musician. And this album is kind of like the, the kind of a confluence or a, a collision or a harmonization at times a, uh, um, between these two worlds. So that's a little bit about myself. Nice. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a lot. Uh, Jonathan has an amazing web page already developed. He didn't speak about it. And he also do a podcast uh, where you can find a lot of content and uh, a lot of inf a lot of inf information you you know? so whatever you want and if you want to purchase his music you can buy it there 